Shalom. We're still in preparation Torah portion Shimini, um, which is the third Torah portion uh, in the book of Leviticus. Shimini has to do with the eighth day. Um, it covers chapter 9, 10, I think 11 of Leviticus. And um, chapter 10 is the story of strange fire. Fire coming down from Yahweh, consuming the two sons of the high priest, Nadab and Habihu, because they brought a strange offering or used strange fire or the wrong fire. Um, we will get, get into that probably later this week. Um, the other thing that stood out to me when I studied chapter 9 this morning, it's chapter 9 verse 11, it's like dialing 911, um, we have a crisis, so chapter 10 of course there's a crisis, but chapter 9 verse 11 says they took the flesh and the hide or the skin to burn it outside the camp. Now the skin is the word, a uh, flesh is the word basar, bashar, and um, it's first used in Genesis 2, where Yahweh sort of repaired the flesh of Adam after he took Chava from his side. That's an interesting thing. Um, well, when you think about it, repairing the flesh and um, that would have left a scar or a sign of some sort a scar in the flesh and the connection between Adam and Chava was they were connected and they are still connected through the marriage covenant so the covenant had a sign in the flesh of Adam so that is linking to circumcision the sign of the covenant in the flesh of man or uh, men of Israel so that goes to show that the sign of the covenant was in the beginning and it was prevalent and connected to the marriage covenant so the covenant Yahweh made with Israel and the commandment of circumcision has to do with a marriage covenant as well and then moving forward the sign in the flesh of Mashiach is the sign in the male or the man of the marriage covenant between Yeshua and his bride so you see the same connection and it points back to the Garden of Eden very interesting um, Basar also means messenger, good tidings, to bring news, to reveal. And that word is first found in 1 Samuel, which has got a very interesting storyline that connects to um, Leviticus chapter 10. And that's a storyline where the high priest, Eli, was a blind, fat high priest. Um, his two sons, Hophni and Pinias, did wrong in the eyes of Yahweh regarding the service in the temple. And they kept back some of the good pieces of meat of the sacrifices and gave the you know, lesser uh, valued meat to the people. So they held back the best. And they also laid with the women that did service in around the temple, probably doing cleaning or whatever they did. And Yahweh was upset and the curse came upon them. And the place that they were at is called Shalom. That means a place of rest, safety. It's also a place where they cease 
to do anything and it's also a place of happiness and prosperity now when you look at that um, you already see a little picture I'm going to elaborate that in a, in a moment so the storyline goes that the messenger came to Eli and told him that the ark was taken and your two sons died then Eli fell backwards because of his weight or his heaviness because he was overweight he broke his neck and he died as well um, so the ark was taken the high priest died and the two sons of the high priest died as well and that connects to Leviticus 9 verse 11 which is another 9-11 situation um, connecting the two Torah portions through the word flesh now flesh also means nakedness it also has to do with uh, fleshiness and sin which points back to last week's topic when we discussed uh, removing the ashes on the altar and also um, Amalek that you can't bank on the things of yesterday, the day before, the previous weeks and months and years um, Yahweh look at you now and He see you for what you are today what energies or what fire are you bringing to serve in the tabernacle and the fire that's required um, on top of the, the wood and the oil is to keep the menorah burning and to keep the brazen altar burning and the brazen altar was for peace offering to have shalom and we're going to look at the meal and a peace offering this week I'm not going to talk about it this morning but just to put things into context so the energy and the fire that exists within the time frame of Hophni and Pinias and what happened there you'll see that the place that they were at they were comfortable there was safety there was prosperity um, and they maybe basically at rest at the place of rest so they didn't contribute to the service in the tabernacle and whatever they done is to take the contributions of the people for their own benefit now that does that not sound like the prosperity teaching in the in the house of Yahweh today in the, in the tabernacle or the, the assemblies of Yahweh today now that is what will cause the high priests or the false teachers and the false um, prophets to spiritually be a die off or to be removed and also um, cleaning the temple from these impurities so Yahweh is not really happy with it and that connects with the seventh church which is Laodicea and they suffer from the same things so we're going to look at the names of Ophni, Pinias, Eli and all those lovely things and that will even give us a bit more insight into these matters which is very interesting so I'll leave you with that today I hope you have a lovely day and may you have a peaceful day Shalom <music>